Hello my friends, today we are gonna create an e-commerce REST API using Node.js and MongoDB. During this tutorial, we are gonna be covering Node.js crude operations, fetching data with queries, and advanced MongoDB methods. And also, in order to provide the security, we are gonna implement JSON Web Token and verify user and admin requests. And finally, we will implement Stripe payment method and you are gonna see how easy to receive a payment from client side. It's the second part of the full stack e-commerce app series. If you didn't watch the design part, I highly recommend you to watch it also because in the next video, we are gonna use that design and this API and we will complete our shopping app. And also you can watch the React admin dashboard video. We will apply our admin actions on that template. So that's all. I hope you will like it. If you want to see more tutorials like this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And also you can support Lamadev by joining the channel or using the link in the description below. Okay, if you are ready, let's get started. Okay, firstly I created a folder here, e-commerce API. And inside this folder, I'm gonna create my main JS file, which is index.js. After that, I should initiate my application Node.js application. To do that, I will come to terminal and I will say npm init. And I'm gonna write here dash y and enter. And as you can see, we have package JSON here. And inside our application name, version, description, and this is our main file. And after that, we are gonna install our dependencies, our libraries, and we are gonna write here our scripts. So which libraries we are going to be using? Let's come here. And if you are using npm, you can write npm and install. If you are using yarn, you can write yarn add. And firstly, we are going to be using express. It's going to be our Node.js framework. So we can create a REST API on our server. And second one will be mongoose. In this project, we are going to be using MongoDB. So after that library, we can create our collections, documents, and after that, we can execute creating, updating, deleting, or reading operations. What else? We can write .env. It's a library that we can hide our secret keys, crucial values, or other important stuff, so nobody can reach them. For example, we are going to be using Stripe payment method. It's going to provide us a secret key for the identification, if you don't hide this secret key, everybody can create a payment operation and charge your users. To prevent this, we will be using this awesome library. And after that, finally, we are going to be using NodeMoon. Essentially, it allows us to refresh our application for every changes. Otherwise, whenever we make any changes, we have to go to the terminal and write here, start this application again and again. So basically, it's a hot reload. Okay, I will enter and it's gonna take time. Okay, it's ready. As you can see, our dependencies are here. Of course, we are gonna be using other libraries, other packages, but for now, for the beginning, it's totally okay. What about these scripts? Firstly, let's come here, our main file. I'm gonna say console log. And I'm gonna write here, hello. So how I'm gonna start my application? I will come here and I will say not index.js. And as you can see, hello is here. It's working. So if I come here and change this world, hello to, for example, I'm saving and it's not here. I have to come here and say again, not index.js and it's gonna run our application again. To prevent this, we are gonna be using NodeMon. So I will come here and I'm gonna say start, and we are gonna be using NodeMon. And our main file, index.js, I will save. So after that, only thing I should do is writing here, yarn start, or npm start. And as you can see, it's listening our application, so whenever I make any changes, it's gonna hot reload my application. I'm changing and saving. And as you can see, it's here. Perfect. So our application is ready to use. 
we can create our Express server. Let's close here. And I'm going to say const express. And it's going to require my express library. OK, we imported our express. So how we are going to use it? It's really easy. Only thing you should do is writing here const app and express function. That's all. This is going to be our application. But to run this application, we should listen any number, any port number. So I will say app.listen and I'm going to provide a port number here. I will say, for example, 5000. And here, callback function. After running application, it's going to write here, for example, backend server is running. As you can see, it's here. Perfect. So how we can connect to our Mongo server? Let's write here our library. Let's import const mongoose. It's going to be required mongoose. So how we are going to use this library? Let's come here and let's open up our browser. If you go to the cloud.mongodb.com, you can create your account and after that you can create your free cluster. I'm not going to show that. It's really easy. You are going to choose free cluster and after that you are going to choose your region. And after clicking create cluster, you are going to see this screen. But before connection, you have to go to the database access. And here you should create your new user. I've already done that. This is my user. If you come here and for example, user and password. And after that, you are going to add user. It's really important because we are going to use this user to access our DB. And finally, we are going to go to network access. We should provide here our IP address. Otherwise, you are not going to able to reach your database. You can click here, add IP address. And you can add only your IP address by clicking this button. Or basically, you can say 0, 0, 0, and 0. And it means every server can reach your DB. Of course, we are just working on localhost. So we can leave it like that. But if you are deploying your application, you should write here your server IP. For now, as I said, it's totally OK. So I'm going to click the database. And I'm going to click connect. So we are going to connect our application on our VS Code. So basically, we need this string. I will copy this. And here, I'm going to try to connect my MongoDB. To do that, I'm going to use mongoose. And I will say connect. And I'm going to write here my URL. I will paste. We should make some changes here. Firstly, it's going to be our password, user password, not our account password. Remember, we created user here in the db access section. So it's going to be that password. So I will write here. It's llama again for me. And here you are going to write your db name. It's going to be, let's say, shop. OK. And of course, it's a promise. So basically, it can be successful or it can just fail. How we are going to control this? I will come here and say then which means if it's successful, I'm going to write my function. It's going to be just console log and db connection successful. So what about error? If there is an error, I will write here catch. It's going to catch this error. So I can take this error. I will just print this on my console. Console log and error. OK, I will save. Backend server is running. DB connection is successful. Let's separate them. So if I change here, for example, my password, I will save. And as you can see, there is an error. Authentication failed. That's because our password is wrong. 
So it works. Awesome. But as I said at the beginning, this is our secret key. So if you share this string by mistake on GitHub or any public sharing platform, everybody can reach your DB and create new collections, documents, or edit your existing documents. So to prevent this, we are going to be using .env. It's really easy. I will come here and say new file, and I'm going to create .env file here. And inside this file, you can write any secret keys. For example, it's going to be mongo URL. And I'm going to copy this link and paste here. I will save. And after that, to use this env file, I should import my library, which is const.env and require.env. After that, I should write here my configuration. Otherwise, you can't use it. So only thing you should do is writing here .env and config. Okay, that's all. So right now, I can delete this URL. And instead, I'm going to write here process env and my secret key name, which is mongo URL. I will paste. So if you make any changes in your env file, I highly recommend you to restart your application to prevent any problem. By the way, we can write here our port number also. I will say process and env.port and I'm going to say if there is no port number inside our env file, use this number, which is 5000. So in this case, you can come here and change your port number. So it's really easy to use env file. Okay, I'm going to start my app again. Yeah, start. Okay, it's successful. Perfect. So what I'm going to do here? I'm going to create my roots. What I mean by that? We are going to be creating a REST API. So we are going to use some endpoints. To do that, you can write here app, for example, let's say get, and I will say use this endpoint, which is API. And you can write here, for example, version number, something like that. But API is totally enough. And after that, let's say test. And I can write here my function. I'm going to say just console log test is successful. So basically, whenever someone make a get request on this endpoint, write test is successful. Let's try. I'm going to open up new tab here and I will say and I will say localhost 5000 and my endpoint here. I will enter and let's come here. As you can see, test is successful. I will enter again and test is successful. Perfect. But it's not a good idea to write here all our endpoints that because we are going to be using, for example, user and add or delete or products. So it should be organized. To do that, we are going to be using router folder. It's going to be roots. So inside, for example, let's create users.js and I'm going to be using express router. I will say const router and it's going to be require express and router function. So in this case, I don't have to write here app. I'm going to be using router. And I will say get. And let's write here endpoint. For example, user test. And here I'm going to take request and response. And after I can write here my function. Basically, request what we are getting from user. A user can provide any username, email, any input or it can be empty also, doesn't matter. And after that, after these functions, we are going to send a response to user. 
So let's write here response. I will say response and I'm gonna send something to my user. I will say user test is successful. Okay. To use this router, I should export it. It's really easy. I will say module and exports and it's gonna be router. Basically, we are just exporting our router. Okay, let's go to index file again and I'm gonna play it here and I'm gonna write here my user router. To do that, I should import it first. I will say const, let's say user root. It's gonna be require and I'm gonna send here my user file. Roots and user. Okay, I can use this root. I will come here. I will say app.use. You can write your endpoint, which is API, and it's gonna be user. So let's write here our user root, and that's all. So basically, whenever we go to API and user, our application will use user root. And inside our user root, we can write any other endpoints. Basically, it means HTTP localhost 5000 and our endpoint API and user. Remember, we are using this endpoint. And additionally, we are going to be using this endpoint user test. So if you go to this URL, it's going to write user test is successful. Let's try. I will save and open my browser. I'm going to delete here and user and user test. I'm going to enter and user test is successful. Awesome. Basically REST API works like that. So what about post methods? Let's write here, for example, router and post. I will say user post test. And again, I'm going to take request and response. And right now, if you are using post method, it means you are going to take some request from your user, your client. For example, let's take username from our client side. I'm going to say const username is going to equal request and body and username. This body is basically what we are passing to our server. Basically, if you are passing any username, email or any input, you should write here body. We are going to pass everything inside our body. And after that, I'm just going to console log this username. So how we are going to pass this request and body? We can't do that on our browser. That's because we don't have any input, any client site here. We can send anything. To test it, there is an awesome application. Most of you already know. It's Postman. If you are a beginner, I should either recommend you to install this application. We are going to test our REST API in this app. So I'm going to create new request here. I'm going to click plus button and I'm going to write here my URL, which is localhost. As you can see, there are our previous applications, previous REST APIs. We are going to be using 5000 again. And API, I will say user. It was user or users. Let's check. Okay, user. It should be users. It's kind of rule. If you are using REST API, you should write here plural words. Users, products, cards, something like that. I'm going to save and I'm going to use this endpoint. Users and user post test is going to be post method. So how I'm going to send my body. I will come here and choose body and it's going to be row and finally JSON. So basically we can create here any JSON object and inside you can write your properties. I will say user name and it's going to be llama. But if I try to send this, it's not going to work. That because our application is not able to take any JSON object. To prevent this, 
I will go to index.js and before my roots, I'm going to write app.use and I will say express and JSON. Okay. In this case, we can pass any JSON file. Let's come back and I will send again. Oops, there is something wrong. Uh, okay, I forgot here, slash. Let's try again. I'm gonna send. As you can see, there is no response. That's because we didn't send anything. But if we come here, as you can see, it's our username. Awesome. This is how we are using get and post methods. If you want to, we can write here response and send. And we can send here something. I will say your username is and I'm going to write here username. Let's try again. I'm going to send and your username is Lama. Yes. So let's make our application dynamic and let's use our MongoDB. To do that, I'm going to create user, cart, product and order collections and I'm going to create here a new folder. Not inside root, it's going to be here inside our main folder, it's going to be models. And inside, let's create user.js and product.js It's going to be cart and finally it's going to be order. Okay, I'm going to close them. Not user. Okay. So how I'm going to create this model? It's really easy. I will say const mongoose and require mongoose. Only thing I should do is creating user schema here. I will say const user schema. And I'm going to create new mongoose and schema. And inside, I'm going to create an object. And here, let's write our properties. First one will be username. We can indicate here its type. And we can decide whether it's required or not, or whether it's unique or not. Let's say type first. It's going to be strict. And after that, I will say required is going to be true without username. We can't create any user. So what else? It's going to be unique. So basically, we cannot create any other user with same username. And that's all. After that, I will say email. And it's going to be string again. And required true and unique true. Okay. What else I can create? It can be password. I will say type string and required. And finally, I'm going to write here is admin type will be boolean that because it will be true or false. And by default, you can write here any default value and it's going to be false. When we create any user, it's not going to be admin. Okay. And after that, you can write here created date, created at, and you can say date and now it's going to take the current date but you don't have to do this if you are using mongoose there is an awesome function for this only thing you should do is writing here timestamp and it's going to be true so basically it's going to create created at and updated at times okay let's make it capital and let's export it i will say module exports and it's going to be mongoose.model 
I'm gonna write here my model name, which is user, and I should provide my user schema. And that's all. We can use this model right now inside our router. But before, if you want to, let's create other models. For example, product. I'm just gonna copy here and open up product. I'm gonna change these names. It's gonna be product. So let's change them. I will close here. It's gonna be title. Description and image. Let's delete this one. What else it can be? Category, size, color, and price. Let's change them. Categories, and I'm gonna say size, color, and it's gonna be price. Okay, firstly, our title will be string, required, and unique. It can't be same product with same name, and description will be string, required, and it doesn't have to be unique, I can delete here. And image will be the same, and what about category? We can have more than one category, so I will write here array. So basically, we can put any category names inside this array, and size will be string, color will be string, and price will be number. By the way, I can delete them. Size and color. Okay, it's really easy as you can see. So I'm gonna, by the way, we took this balloon from different library. I will delete this. Let's come here. Let's delete. It's gonna be capital B. Okay, like that. Okay, I'm gonna copy this and let's open cart model. I will paste. Let's change these names. It's gonna be cart schema. Name will be cart and cart schema again. Okay. So what we are gonna have? Firstly, every user has one cart. So I will say user ID. It's gonna be string, required, and unique. Actually, I can delete here. And only one thing we need here. I'm gonna delete them. And it's gonna be products. We are gonna have user and products inside this cart. It can be multiple product, so it's gonna be array. But I'm not gonna write here that because I'm gonna indicate here some specific properties. So what I will do is writing here array and inside I will say first product ID. Let's say type string. And what else we need? We need quantity. And it's gonna be type number. Oops. And by default, when we create any product inside our cart, it's gonna be just one. And the user can increase and decrease this number. Okay. Timestamps is true. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna copy this and I can close here and let's open up our other model, which is order. I'm gonna paste it and let's change these names. It's gonna be order. Okay. And again, it's gonna have user ID and products. Basically, it's gonna be after purchasing items and according to this order, we can send any receipt to our users, our clients. So after this product, I'm gonna write here amount. Type will be number and it's gonna be required. True. And what else? After purchasing, we need user address. Let's write here address and it's gonna be type string. Actually, after purchasing, the Stripe library is going to return us an object, so we can use it. I'll say just object. That because it's going to contain 
line 1, line 2, city, country and other informations. So we can write here object and take all those address information. Okay, so I'll say require true again. And finally, I'm going to write here status and type string and by default it's going to be pending. That because after purchasing it's going to be pending. After shipping the product we can just make here its own way or something like that. And after that when the user receives its order we are going to make here received or something like that. Okay. So that's all for our models. So we can use our roots. Okay. By the way, I'm going to just delete them. We don't need this. It was just test. Okay. So I can copy this and paste for any other roots. Let's create our other roots. First one will be product root. I will paste and cart and order okay i'm making them that because sometimes i just forget writing here module exports okay so firstly let's create our first user we can register or login but doing this inside user router is not a best practice that because login process is a different world. If you want to create more secure applications, I highly recommend you to create another route here, which is authentication. Let's say auth and JS, and we are gonna register and login inside this router. So let's write here first register. I'm gonna close here and I will say router, remember what we are doing. I will say post that because the user is going to send us username, password and other information. So it should be post request. And I'm going to write here my endpoint is going to be register, request and response. And let's write here our function. So how we are going to use our models. Firstly, I will say const new user and it's going to be new and user model. Okay, it's not here. Let's import. I will say const user require a my user model. It should be here models and user. Okay, I can use it right now. Inside, I'm gonna say username equals request and body. Remember, we are taking this from user and username. And others will be the same. Email, email, and password. And that's all I think. We don't need this. Okay. So basically, if we send here username, email, gmail.com, and password. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we are gonna send this body, but it doesn't mean we are creating this user in our DB. It's just that model object. We should send this to our DB. So how we are gonna do this? We are gonna use save method. So if I say new user and save, it's gonna save this user to our DB. But there is a problem here. I can do this directly that because it's a promise which is async function what I mean by that when we save any document or update or delete or any other things in our DB basically it takes couple milliseconds or even seconds it depends on your server it depends on MongoDB server or the internet connection of the user so basically there is no chance to know this exact time so if I write here for example const save the user and if I say console log this save the user it's not gonna work that because it's gonna start this process and after that 
instantly it's gonna try to write saved user. But that time we don't have saved user because it takes couple milliseconds. To prevent this, we should use async functions here. How we are gonna do this? It's really easy. I will say async here and I'm gonna come here and say await. Basically, we are gonna wait this process and after that, if we have saved user, we are gonna console log. But it can be any problem in our server or DB. To catch our error, you can write here try and catch block. So I will cover this. We are gonna try to save our user. If it's successful, we are gonna console log. If it's not, if there is something wrong, I'm gonna write here catch an error. And we are gonna console log this error. So basically, we are gonna make our CRUD operations like that, async function and try and catch block. Okay, but there's no sense to write saved user or error like console log. What we are gonna do is sending this user to our client site. I will say response. You can directly send this saved user, but also you can write here any status. It's gonna be 200 or 201. 200 is successful, 201 is successfully added. And after that, I will say send this saved user. So what about error? I will say response and it's gonna be 500 and JSON, we are gonna send this error. In this project, we are not gonna take care of our specific error codes. We are gonna just write 500 for any error. I just don't wanna make this tutorial too long. But what you can do, for example, if the user miss any inputs here, you can say if there is no request and body and username or email or password, you can send status code 400. And inside JSON, you can say, please enter your username, email and password, something like that. But I'm not gonna write every error here. It's gonna be just 500. So let's try, I will save. But as you remember, we didn't write here our authentication route. Let's import, I will say auth and here let's say API and auth and it's gonna be my new router. Okay, let's try. I'm gonna open up Postman. By the way, you can create any collection here. Let's create actually. I will say shop, let's close here and I'm gonna say API, authentication and register. It's gonna be post method and our body is here. I'm gonna send. Right now it works perfectly. As you can see, this is our new user. Let's check that out inside our DB. I will come here. And I'm gonna go to browse collections. And as you can see, our shop is here. I will click and users. And our user is here, awesome. But there is a other problem here. As you can see, we just reveal our password here. You will never ever save your passwords like this, even in your DB. If someone just steal your DB or something, they can reach any password of any user. And to prevent this, we should just encrypt our passwords before saving here. Let's come here. As you can see, we are taking this password directly from our request and body, but we should encrypt this first and after save this user. So how we are gonna do this? There are many options to encrypt your Passwords, you can search for it on Google, but in this tutorial, we are going to be using Crypto.js. Let's open up this documentation. And as you can see, there are many options to hash your passwords. You can choose any of them, but we are going to be using this one. 
it's a really strong hashing algorithm i highly recommend you to use it so basically let's come here as you can see we are going to write here crypto jazz and this hashing algorithm after that encrypt and it's going to be our password we are going to pass user password and after that we should indicate here a secret passphrase we are going to use this secret key that because when we try to decrypt this encrypted password we need this secret passphrase again let's install this crypto jazz i'm going to open up new terminal here and i will say yarn at crypto jazz i will enter okay i can use it right now i'm gonna say const crypto jazz it will be like that and i will say require crypto jazz let's use it like that i'm just gonna copy this and here let's delete this password i will say crypto jazz aes and encrypt here is gonna be user password i will say request and body and password after that you can write here your secret key let's open up our env file here i will say password secret and it's gonna be of course it's really basic but i will say just llama you can write here any gibberish code or you can just generate any uid or something but for this tutorial it's totally enough i will just copy this and let's close and paste here i will say process.eme and pass secret and of course it's gonna provide us a hashed code now we are gonna save this inside our db only thing i should do is writing here to string let's try again i will save by the way i can delete this user it's not secure okay let's try again i will send and as you can see our password is different right now let's come here and refresh the page something like that awesome so i hope you understood how to create new object here new document so let's create our register function i will say login let's write here our root router and post method again it's gonna be login endpoint and again it's gonna be async function don't forget that it's really important and request and response let's come here and save this as register inside our shop i can rename this it will be register okay so let's write here other request i can close here it's gonna be localhost 5000 and auth and this time it's gonna be login and again i'm gonna choose body row and json file and we try to login we are gonna write our username let's say llama and password again one two three four five six okay of course post method so let's write our function how we are gonna find our user inside our db i will say const user and await of course if you are using await you should write here try and catch catch if there is any error it's gonna be response and 5000 sorry 500 and we are gonna send this error okay so how i'm gonna find my user i will say model user model 
and I'm going to use find one method here because there is only one user with same username. So I'm going to write here my condition. It's going to be username request and body and username. So when you find Loma inside DB, just return to me. Of course, if the password is correct. So how I'm going to decrypt my password? I'm going to use this method. First my password and my secret key. And of course, by the way, it's going to return us a code. After that, we should turn this to string again. So what I will say, I will say const hash or hashed password. And I'm going to say crypto.js AES and it's going to be decrypt. And let's write here our password, which is user and password. So I will say process and EMV and what was the name? Let's check here. Pass and sec. Okay, let's paste here. Okay, this is our hashed password. Let's turn this into string. So I will say const password. It's going to be hashed password and to string. By the way, if you are using any other character, you can write here any specific version, for example, crypto jazz and encode UFD8. Something like that. Okay, let's correct this. Okay, so I'm gonna write here a condition first. I will say if there is no user, I'm gonna say response and status is gonna be 401 and I'm gonna send an error. Oops, JSON, wrong credentials. So I will do the same thing for this password. I'm gonna say if password doesn't equal our request um, by the end password, it means it's a wrong password, so we can return this error again. Wrong credentials. Okay, so if everything is okay, we can just return this user response and status is going to be 200 which is successful and json will be our user let's see backend server is running db is successful let's try i'm gonna send and as you can see our user is here i'm gonna change this name i'm gonna send wrong credentials it's going to be correct and this is going to be wrong one. I will send again wrong credentials. Absolutely. It works. By the way, after login process, in our React application, we are going to save these informations. But there is a problem here that we can see this password. Even if no one knows our secret key here for our Crypto.js, you should never ever reveal your password anywhere. I can use spread operator and send my user every information but password. So how I'm gonna do this? I will say const and I'm gonna write here password and others. It's gonna be my user. I'm gonna send only others. Basically, we just destructure our user First one is our password and other one is other informations, username, email or whatever. And we are going to leave this here. We are going to pass only others. Let's see. I will save. Oops, something wrong here. Ah, okay. We already used password name. Let's write here something else. Password original password let's change it here also okay i'm gonna save again let's see okay it's working 
but there will be some problem here. Let's see. I'm gonna show you here. I'm gonna send. And as you can see, there is something wrong. That because our MongoDB stores our documents inside this folder, underscore and document. But we are passing user directly. I know it's a little bit weird, but you should write here user and document. So let's save and see again. I'm gonna send. And right now, as you can see, we have everything but password. Awesome. So right now, we are gonna update and delete our users. But before that, let's make our application more secure. To do that, we are gonna add JWT, which is JSON Web Token. I'm gonna write here, yarn add and JSON Web Token. Where we are using this web token, I'm not gonna explain everything, but basically we are gonna verify our users, we are gonna provide them a JSON web token after login process, so whenever they try to make any request, updating or deleting any user or product or cart, we are just gonna verify if the user, cart or order belongs to client or not. If you want to learn more about JSON web token, I created an awesome video, you can watch it and you can understand it better. So I'm gonna write here const jwt and from json web token. Sorry, require json web token. Okay. After login process, if everything is okay, I'm gonna create json web token. I will say const access token. And it's gonna be JWT and sign. And I'm gonna pass here some properties. First one will be our user ID. So let's say ID and user.id. Basically, you can pass here any property. We are gonna keep our ID and is admin properties inside our token. That because after, for example, when we try to delete user, we are gonna check ID inside JSON web token. If it equals this number, this user ID, it means this user belongs to our client, so they can delete this user or update or whatever. And also we can use is admin property here. If the user is admin, he can just delete any user or make any crude operation for any other collections here. Okay. So I will say is admin. It's gonna be user dot is admin. And here I should provide my secret key after this object. I will say let's create inside our env file. I'm gonna say jwt secret key. It's gonna be llama again. As I said before, you can write here any long secret key. Okay. I'm gonna say process env and jwt secret. So what else I can put here? It can be expiration date. So I will say expires in. It's gonna be, let's say, three days. After three days, we are not gonna able to use this access token again. In that case, we should log in again. Okay. So after that, I can write here my access token. Let's try. I'm gonna log in again. I shall cover this with object. Let's try again. Okay, it works. But as you can see, there is others here. To prevent this, I'm just gonna write here spread operator. And let's see. Okay, everything is right. And send again. And this time, you have every information and additionally access token. Awesome. So we are gonna try to update our user and you are gonna understand better why we are using this JSON web token. Let's open up our user root. 
here and I'm gonna write my first root. It's gonna be router dot put because we are updating and here I'm gonna write some parameter which is user ID. So we should indicate here a specific user ID and here I'm gonna write some middleware to verify my JSON web token. So I'm gonna create here new file and it's gonna be verify token and yes okay again I'm gonna import my JSON web token const JWT and JSON web token okay so how I'm gonna verify my token let's write here our function it's gonna be verify token and it's gonna be middleware so we are able to reach our request response and also next and again if you are confused about that just watch my JWT video okay I will say const auth header and it's gonna be request headers and token that because we are gonna provide our token here it's our body but also we can come here and choose headers and here we can write our token and inside we are gonna say bearer and it's gonna be our JSON web token so basically we are using this token here okay so I will say if there is no auth header else I'm gonna return an error I will say return response and status it's gonna be 401 which is not authenticated so I will say JSON and you are not authenticated okay if we have token we should just verify this to do that I'm gonna use verify function JWT and verify I'm gonna write here my token and after that my secret key process EMV and what was the name JWT secret let's check again yes okay and finally after verification it's gonna return us either an error or if everything is okay it's gonna return us a data let's say user you can write here whatever you want it's gonna be user so I will say if there is an error I'm gonna return new error here let's say 403 but this time it's gonna be token is not valid it can be expired or wrong token so if everything is okay I'm gonna assign my user to my request it's gonna be request and user and equals this user here so basically remember we have request and body request and header and I just created new one it's gonna be request and user you can write here whatever you want and after that I will say next basically it's gonna leave this function and it's gonna go to our router it's gonna continue running this function so I can write here verify token of course I should import this first module exports I'm gonna export it like that verify token of course dot here I'm using like that that because we are gonna create any other functions here you will see after that so I can write this here verify token I'm gonna import as you can see from our file and after that I can use request and response So firstly I should decide whether this token belongs to client or admin or not. 
So if you remember, we assign here request and user. We can use this. I will say if request and user we are keeping inside our ID, we can use it equals this ID here. It means they are the same user. The user allowed to update this user information. So I will say request and params dot ID to use this ID params and its name here. And also I can check whether it's an admin or not. I will say request and user and is admin. So in this case, I can update my user. But if I write this like that, for any request, I should write it again and again. To prevent this, let's just copy this and create another function here. I will say const verify token and authorization. It's going to be again request response and next. Firstly, I'm going to verify my token here. I can use this function. I will say verify token request response and we have next here. Remember, we can write any function here. I will say if the user ID equals params ID or it's an admin, you can continue your root function, which is next. If it's not, I'm going to return response and status for all three. And I will say you are not allowed to do that or something like that. Okay. I can export this function also. So instead of verify token, I'm going to say verify token and authorization. Before updating, I'm going to check my password that because user can change its password. So in this case, I should again encrypt my password. I will see if request and body and password. I'm going to encrypt again. Let's come here and choose it like that. So here I will say new request and body and password will be this encrypted version like that. I will delete this comma. Okay. And after that, I can update my user. I will say try. Of course, it's an async function. That's right here, async. Okay. I will say const updated user. I'm going to say await and user model. It's here. And I'm going to say find by ID and update here. It's really easy to use MongoDB. There are many useful methods here. So I'm going to write my user ID first, which is request and params and ID or request user and ID. And after that, I'm going to write here what I'm going to update. So how I'm going to set new information to my user? It's really easy. I will say set and request and body. Basically, take everything inside request and body and set it again. If you do that, it's not going to return you this updated user. To prevent this, you should write here new and true. Okay, let's write here catch block error and response status 500 and JSON error. Like that. And I'm going to send my updated user 
response and it's gonna be 200 and I'm gonna send this new user updated user let's see I will come here and I'm gonna create new request by the way I can just save this one login okay but before let's take our access token I'm gonna log in again and we are gonna need this token I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna create new request let's close this one it's gonna be put method and I will say localhost 5000 API users and user ID we are gonna take our user ID but before let's write here our header token and it's gonna be bearer this token by the way if you are using bearer here you should split your header first we didn't do that let's come here verify token I will say if there is token firstly I should split and take my token by the way I wrote here token without any and it's interesting it didn't give me any error here there is no token <laughs> okay so I will say const token it's gonna be auth header and I will split this my split reference point will be just space that because bearer and there is a space here and after our token so we are gonna take this second one so if I write here just one which is second element it's gonna be our token like that I will open up body again row and json so I'm gonna change my username it's gonna be username it was llama I'm gonna change it to llama updated but here I should write my user id which is here I'm gonna just copy and paste let's try before I'm gonna delete this header and you are gonna see what it's gonna return I'm gonna send and as you can see you are not authenticated if I click here and just change my token let's add here just one I will send and it says okay you have token but it's not valid okay I'm gonna delete again and I'm gonna send and our new username is llama updated let's see I'm gonna refresh and llama updated awesome I hope you understood if you are confused just watch it again okay by the way it's not for user but for example for order or product only admin can add any product so it means we should create another function here and it's gonna be verify token and admin I can copy this and paste here it's gonna be verify token and admin so I can delete here it's gonna be just controlling admin if the user is admin we are gonna continue our function our router function so I can export it and that's all I can close this page so let's create our delete method I will say delete and router and it's gonna be delete method and here again I'm gonna write my parameter which is user ID and again I'm gonna verify my user like that and async function request response I'm gonna write my function here it's gonna be really easy I'm just gonna write try and catch block catch error it's gonna be response 500 
and JSON error. And here I will say await and user. There is an awesome method again, find by ID and delete. Basically, I'm just gonna write here request and params and ID. It's gonna find and delete. And after that, I will say 200. I'm gonna send message here. User has been deleted. Okay. So what else I can do? I can write get method get user it's gonna be get and ID again but this time I'm gonna write verify token and admin only admin get any user verify token and admin okay again try catch block this time I will say find by ID and again it's gonna be request params and ID and after that I can send this user of course I should write here const user and I'm gonna send this user but remember here it's sending all information of the user to prevent this I'm just gonna destructure my other properties so I can see password and others and it's gonna send only others I can't wait here we are not passing anything else by the way I can write here other endpoint I will say find an ID okay let's try I will write here find and it's gonna be get method I will send and you are not allowed to do that that because we are not an admin let's create another user I will say register let's say admin admin gmail.com and I'm gonna send and let's open our DB I'm gonna refresh and make my user admin let's edit it's gonna be true I will update let's log in as an admin I will send and I'm gonna use this access token let's close here and register and here I'm gonna write new JWT this time I'm gonna send as you can see it's here yes so what does I can get all users get all users and I can delete here if I make get request it's gonna fetch all users so what I will do I will say users await user and it's just gonna be find which is find every user and that's all I can send these users but I'm gonna show you something else here we can use any query in our URL what I mean by that let's save this it's gonna be get user and I'm gonna duplicate this it's gonna be get all users and I'm gonna delete here firstly I'm gonna send okay as you can see llama updated and admin let's close here and expand this one but what if I write here any query like new and equals true so in this case it's gonna return only latest five users so how am I gonna do that I will come here and I'm gonna say const query it's gonna be request and query and it's gonna be new which is the name of our query 
Okay, I can write some condition here. I will say const users. If there is a query, it's gonna return wait and user and find, and it's gonna just return five users. If it's not, it's gonna return all users. But if I do that, it's gonna return first five users. How I'm gonna sort this? It's really easy. I will say sort and sort by ID. It's gonna be just minus one. Of course, inside object. Let's write here one and try. I'm gonna save. And I'm gonna send again. As you can see, it returns the latest user. Awesome. If I delete this, it's gonna return all users. Awesome. Let's make it five again. So finally, we are gonna return our stats. User stats per month. So I will say get user stats. I'm gonna say router and get method. It's gonna be stats. And again, it's gonna be just admin. No one can reach this data. And async function request response. Okay. So what's this stats? Basically, it's gonna return us total number of user per month. For example, September, just 10 users. For August, 20 users registered, something like that. But I wanna just limit this stats. That because I don't care about, for example, last year. So I will say const date. I'm gonna create new date. Of course, new here. Okay, basically it creates current date. So how I'm gonna find last year? I will say const last year. And again, new date. I will say date and set full year. And again, date and get full year and minus one. Basically, it's gonna return us the last year. Last year today. Okay, let's write here our function, try and catch error response 500. and JSON error. Okay. So, as I said, I wanna user statistics per month. To do that, I should group my items. And for this, we can use MongoDB aggregate. I will say const data and await. I'm gonna use user model and what I will say is aggregate. It can be confusing a little bit if you are not familiar with MongoDB, but actually when you make more practice, you are gonna understand better. Firstly, I'm gonna write my condition. To do that, I will say match. It's gonna try to match my condition. What's my condition? It's gonna be created at date. Because remember, every user has created at date, and I will say it's gonna be less than today and greater than last year. Basically, I will just say greater than last year. Okay. And I wanna take month numbers. To do that, I will use project and month and it's gonna be month and my created at inside my DB. We just create month variable here and we set take the month number inside my created at date. What I mean by that? For example, this user has been created at 2021 and September, it's gonna take this number, 
we choose nine and it's gonna assign to this month it's that easy if you say year it's gonna just return this number after this project i can group my items my users i will say group and you should write here id first it should be unique so i can choose my month here which is this month for september it's gonna be nine for august it's gonna be eight something like that and also i need total user number so i will say total and i can use sum method here and if i say just one it's gonna sum every registered user let's see i will open here and duplicate this one it's gonna be user stats i'm gonna write here stats and let's try okay something is wrong it's not returning anything ah that's because we didn't send our data okay i will say response 200 and uh, we are gonna send this data let's see i will send and as you can see id is 9 which is september and total is 2. let's change any of them for example this one is gonna be august for example i will update and i'm gonna send again and as you can see september 1 august 1 absolutely we are gonna use this statistics inside our admin dashboard and we are gonna create an awesome chart okay so we finished our user route let's take care of our products so i can copy everything here and i'm gonna open product js let's paste here everything here okay we are going to be using our product model let's start with create operation that because we didn't do inside our user js so i will say create i will say router and it's going to be post method i will say async request response and i'm going to write my functions but before let's take care of root here it's gonna be product so i will just replicate this and it's gonna be products and products root okay let's come back by the way i forgot writing here verify token and admin okay in this case only admin can create any product so i will say const new product it's gonna be new product and inside i will take everything which we provide inside our body and after that let's write try and catch again error why it's capital e okay response 500 of course that is here and json error and here i will say my product i will say const saved product it's going to be await and new product and save now after saving i can send this 200 and json say it product that's all let's see i will say new product or add product okay i will change here products and it's gonna be post and body will be 
let's close here firstly title let's say puma t-shirt um, what else we have let's open up our product model title description image categories description image will be just say test again categories size color and price categories is going to be array don't forget and inside let's say t-shirt and man of course they are separated like that okay and here size is gonna be medium color gray and finally price is gonna be number let's say thirty dollars okay let's try to create i hope everything is okay and as you can see it's our first product awesome it works so let's create other requests i'm just gonna open it it's gonna be again put id and it's gonna be verify admin we don't need that it's about passwords so i'm gonna open here also okay so I will say updated product and I'm gonna use product here find my ID and update and everything will be the same so I can pass here absolutely delete let's open up verify admin and product model find by ID and delete um, product has been deleted as you can see it's really really easy once you create your first router others will be just kind of copy and paste <laughs> okay get product but this time users and admins can reach this data or also guess users so I'm gonna delete here everybody can see products so I will say product and product find by ID and I can delete here and serve this product. Awesome. So let's open this comment get all products. Again, I'm going to delete here. Everybody can fetch all data, all products and this time we are gonna have two queries not only new also we are gonna fetch by our category so let's change this it's gonna be let's say q new and one more q category and it's gonna be category so basically we can fetch all products by created at date and just five of them and by their category so how I'm gonna do this firstly let's create here an array I will just say let's products actually I can delete here and you can see better okay I will say if there is a query and if it's query and new my products will be await and product and find and again i'm gonna sort this created at date minus one and limit will be five and i will write here else if query category my products will be await and 
product and find again but this time I'm gonna write a condition which is categories because remember let's open up our product we have categories and array basically we are gonna say if the category query which we created here is inside this array we are gonna just fetch these products so how I'm gonna do this I will say in and Q category like that and I'm gonna write here as if there is no query basically our products will be all products inside our DB await and product and find that's all so after that we can just send this product let's see I'm gonna create other product here let's say Nike t-shirt and let's say woman small okay it doesn't matter I will send and I'm gonna create new one let's say get all products I'm gonna say products and let's send as you can see Puma t-shirt and Nike t-shirt okay if I come here and say new true by the way let's make it one and we can see if it works or not I will send and as you can see it's only Nike t-shirt so if I come here and say category and let's say just man it's gonna be Puma t-shirt if I write here t-shirt we have both of them awesome it works so we don't need any stats here I can delete and that's all for our products so I can copy this again and paste for my cart I'm gonna close everything here except this crate okay so we are gonna create cart so basically any user can create its own cart so I will say verify token and I'm gonna say let's change these names it's gonna be cart and that's all what about update let's open up and I can change here user can change its own cart so I will say verify token and authorization so I can change these names it's gonna be cart find by ID and update everything looks good okay that's all I love it it's really fast <laughs> okay I can delete my own cart so it's gonna be again token and authorization let's change it it's gonna be cart so it's gonna be get cart actually it's gonna be get user cart so here again I will write verify token and authorization and this ID will be user ID don't forget not cart ID so basically I can write here user actually okay so I'm gonna write here cart and cart but it's not gonna be find by ID because it's not our cart ID I will just say find and it's gonna be my condition here which is user ID it's gonna be request params and user ID by the way it's gonna be find one that because every user just has one card and here is gonna be our card and finally get all products but we are not gonna have any query so I can just delete here 
I will just write here cat all. Let's write our router. It's gonna be cat method and it's gonna be just main URL and only admin can reach this data because we are gonna see all cards of all users. So it's gonna be async function request response and try and catch oops try catch and i'm gonna say status 500 and error and here i will say const cards all cards is gonna be await and cart and find response to 100 and i'm gonna send all cards okay awesome it's really easy and again i can copy this and open up my order let's close them i'm gonna paste here by the way did we just import our card previous router ah oh, no that's the reason why we are seeing error here so it's gonna be cart okay so i'm gonna change it it's gonna be order and again i'm gonna change them order and for update only admin can update this order so i will say verify token and admin and it's gonna be order now we can delete our cart again admin and i'm gonna change them order and get user orders find a user id verify token and authorization and it's gonna be order actually orders and it's not gonna be just one that because users can have more than one orders so after that get all orders of course it should be admin like that orders and i'm gonna change here okay and additionally again i'm gonna write here my stats what i will say i will say get monthly income so i will say router and it's gonna be get method i will say income and only admin can reach this data and i will say async request response and let's open up our parentheses and oops by the way get okay so what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna do the similar thing that we have done for users remember every user per month but this time i'm gonna use only this month and previous month only september and august that because we are gonna compare our incomes so what i'm gonna do i will say const date again new date and i'm gonna write const last month new date i'm gonna take this date set month and date again and get month and again minus one and i need also previous month so let's change it new date so i can change it that because we are using here so i will just say new date set month and last month minus one okay so basically if it's first september today it's gonna be first august and it's gonna be first july awesome let's right here try and catch block and aggregate our data 
error response and error so i will write here const income is going to be await and order aggregate and here i'm going to write my condition again it's going to be match and created at it's going to be greater than previous month so basically it's going to be just last two months okay i will say project and inside again i'm going to take my months months created at of course in object for now it's exactly the same thing as we did for users and additionally i'm gonna write here sales and it's gonna be our amount because remember let's open up our order we have user id products and amount we are gonna take this and after when we group our elements we are gonna sum all these amounts per month okay let's group them i will say group it's gonna be id again this id will be our month and total will be sum function and our sales here here by the way we have more curly brackets i think okay so i will write here response and send income send or json okay so let's create some order i will say add order and here it's gonna be orders by the way we didn't write our routers inside our index we have products we don't have cart and order let's change them cart and order let's write them here cart and order okay let's see orders and post methods it's gonna be body and uh, firstly it's gonna be user id let's check our id here inside our db it can be llama updated i will copy and paste here and products it's gonna be comma by the way and inside our array i'm gonna write product id let's write here something doesn't matter and quantity it's gonna be two so i will do the same thing again product id will be different and quantity just one for example and finally after this array i'm gonna write my amount address and status let's say fifty dollars address usa and uh, we don't need status it's already by default pending so let's see i hope it will work okay something is wrong ah okay i forgot the lighting here comma again and it's here awesome so i'm gonna create one more 
let's say amount a hundred okay but this time I'm gonna change this created at time it's gonna be just eight so let's come here I will refresh the page and my orders and one of them will be August let's say this one update let's see right now I'm gonna open new request and it's gonna be income and I'm gonna change here by the way I didn't save them that's why it's still user okay it doesn't matter orders and stats I'm gonna send what's wrong ah oh, okay it's income not stats okay awesome as you can see september 100 and august 50. perfect right now we are able to use this recent income and we can compare with last month and we can show the percentage inside our admin panel awesome so we almost finished our rest api but what about our payment for the payment method we are going to be using stripe it's the one of the most popular payment methods for millions of applications and also it's really easy to use it has many use cases and customizations i highly recommend you to use stripe of course you can use any other payment methods like paypal or any other small applications but as I said, Stripe is the most popular and in this tutorial we are going to be using Stripe. You can create an account and sign in and after signing you are going to see this page. I'm going to click developers and here as you can see in API key section we have publishable key and the secret key. We are going to use this publishable key in our frontend side and this secret key in our server side. I will say we will test key and I'm gonna click and copy this key and here inside my .eme file I will say stripe key and I'm gonna paste it here okay and right now let's create another route I'm gonna say stripe and I'm gonna import my router first const router it's gonna be require express and router and after that I will say module and exports it's gonna be router so how we are gonna use our stripe I'm gonna come here and I will say yarn add stripe okay it's ready I can use it I will say const stripe and it's gonna be require stripe and here I'm gonna write my secret key which is process and emv and stripe key okay so my endpoint I will say router and post method it's gonna be payment I will take my request and response and I'm gonna create my function so how I'm gonna charge my clients it's really easy I will say stripe and charges and I'm gonna create a charge here I'm gonna write my request and body what it's gonna include it's gonna include our source first source is gonna be request and body I will say token ID then we make any payment the stripe is gonna return us a token ID so we are gonna use it here and after that I'm gonna write here a month again request and body and amount and finally I'm gonna write here my currency 
is going to be US dollar. And OK. After that, after this object, it's going to return us either an error or successful response. So let's write here stripe error and stripe response. Let's create our function. Firstly, I will say if there is an error, stripe error, we are going to response our user with this error. It's going to be response, let's say 500, and send or JSON this error. If it's successful, I will say as. This time, we are going to response our Stripe answer. So I will say 200, which is successful, and JSON Stripe response. And that's all. Basically, we are going to make our payments like that. So what about client side? I'm not going to use Postman. It's not a good idea to use Postman. Instead, I'm going to be using a React application. So I created React application. It's really basic app. As you can see, we have two routes. This endpoint is going to call pay component and this endpoint is going to call success component. Let me show you. As you can see, it's just one button here. If we go to success, as you can see, it's really basic page. Okay, right now what I'm going to do is installing React Stripe library. I will come here and I'm going to say yarn add and react stripe checkout. I will enter. Let's open up our documentation. As you can see, we are going to have just on token function. Basically, when we make any payment in our client site, this stripe is going to return us a token. And with this token, we are going to make payment request to our Node.js server here. It's really easy. And it's really secure that because you can't do any payment by using only client site, you have to create your server and verify your payment. OK, let's check. Only thing we should do is using this component. But before, of course, we should import. I'm going to open pay component and here I will just import. OK, I can use it right now. This is my button. I'm just going to cover this button with stripe component. I will just cover it. OK. So which properties we are going to pass here? Let's see. As you can see, there are many props here. Our company name, description, image, currency, amount, everything is here. So we are going to use some of them. And this token is really important that because, as I said, it's going to return us a token and we are going to use it by creating a function. Let's do this. I will come here and I'm going to say first my company name and it's going to be Llama Shop. And after I'm going to give image. It's going to be our logo. I will just copy and paste here. And after that, we are going to need billing and shipping address from the user. That because we are going to ship our products. So I will say billing address and oops, there is no comma. Shipping address. Let's give some description. Let's say your total is $20. Okay. I will write here my amount. And there is an important thing here. It's going to be $20. But Stripe working on cents. So you should add here two more zero. So it's going to be like that. So I will say token. And I'm going to write here my function. It's going to be on token. And finally, we need our Stripe key. So what's our public key? Let's check here. API key and this is going to be our publishable key. I just copy 
here or in EMV file, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna paste it. I will say key and it's gonna be this string. Okay, so I can pass this key right now. I will just say key. Okay, that's all. Let's create our function. After a, I'm gonna say const on token. And of course, it's gonna return us token so we can use it. I'm just gonna console and log. And token, okay, let's see. I will go to pay and we are gonna see right now. I'm clicking and as you can see, this stripe provides us this beautiful UI and our title, description, logo and shipping and billing address. If I don't check this, as you can see, we have to write our shipping address and billing address. So let's make some test. I'm gonna click and I will just use my test account. I will say test at gmail.com address zip code and city. As you can see, we need a card number an expiration date and CVC. So test number is 4242, 42, something like that. And it's gonna be 0824 and CVC is 123. Okay, you can check this number on Stripe website because they are updating this all the time. So I'm gonna pay. And as you can see, it's successful. I'm gonna open my console and it returns us an object. I will click and as you can see our email, ID, everything and inside card, we have our information. So if we go to Stripe here and payments, as you can see there is no payment at all. That's because we didn't send this information to our backend and we didn't make any payment. So how we are gonna do that? So basically I can create a use effect and whenever we have a token, we can just make backend server request. Firstly, I'm gonna create use state here. So I will say const, I'm gonna write stripe token and set stripe token. And it's gonna be use state hook and initial state will be null. We don't have any token at the beginning. Of course, I should import this, import use state and also use effect from react. Okay. Of course, it's token. So instead of console log, I can set my token here. I'll say set stripe token and it's going to be our stripe token here. Okay. So I'm gonna create here use effect. And I'm gonna write here my dependency, which is stripe token. We are just gonna make backend server request. So I will say const make request. And it's gonna be async function. And here I will write my try and catch block, catch and error, I will say console log this error. Otherwise, firstly we are going to use Axios, of course we should install first, I will say yarn add Axios. Okay, let's import it and it's going to be post method and I'm going to give my local host address http local host and it's going to be 5000 api checkout and finally payment so it's going to return us our stripe response so I will say const response here okay and I forgot await don't forget that and I'm gonna give my body here. 
which elements we are going to use. Remember here, let's check. As you can see, we need source, which is body and token ID. We need amount. So let's pass these two elements. I will say token ID is going to be our token, which is Stripe token here. And remember, where is our token? I will just close here. And as you can see, it's ID. So we are going to use this property. So I'm going to say Stripe token dot ID. And here I'm going to write my amount and it's going to be $20. And that's all. Let's check. I'm going to console log response and data. And I'm going to save. Let's try. Of course, we didn't call our make request function. We should call it here. I will say if Stripe token just run this function. Let's see. I'm clicking and again I'm gonna write my test account. Test, test, test address and New York. Let's see. 42, 42. 24 and 1, 2, 3. I will pay. And there is a problem here. It's been blocked by course policy that because we didn't add our course library to our backend. Let's do that quickly. I'm going to open index.js and here new terminal and I'm going to say yarn add and course. Let's use it. I will say const course require and it's going to be course. Let's use it. How I'm going to use? I will say app.use and my course function. That's all. Let's see again. I'm going to pay test and others. It's going to be 42 again. Let's check. I hope everything is okay right now. Okay, again, there is something wrong. Let's check our network. It returns 404. Oh, okay, that's because we didn't use trap root here. Let's use it. I will say stripe root and I'm gonna use it here API I will say checkout and it's gonna be stripe root so let's try again I'm gonna click test account I'm gonna write card number and other information and I'm gonna pay We are waiting for token and as you can see it's here it comes from our backend server and all information are here address details and we are going to be using this address and other informations and in the next video we are going to create our orders awesome let's check here i'm going to refresh the page and as you can see we have a payment 20 dollars awesome it works. If you click, you are going to see all information here. That's all. Maybe we can make our application a little bit fancier. I can say here, if there is a Stripe token, write here a span, for example, and say processing. Please wait. And if we don't have token, we can just return our button. Let's cover that. Remember, this token is being returned after client payment. And after this token, we are sending our backend server request. And after that, it returns us a data. So what else we can do? 
I can use use history hook and we can go to success page. Let's do that. You don't have to, but I'm just gonna show you how to do that. I will say const history and it's gonna be use history hook. And we are gonna be using history after successful operation. I'm gonna say history and push and we are going to success page and of course you can pass your data here also for example response and data of course in this tutorial we are not gonna use any data in the next video you are gonna understand better what I mean but for now it's totally okay let's try by the way it should be history also our dependency okay let's check I will refresh the page. Let's close here. I will pay again. And I will pay. One, two, three. As you can see, processing, please wait. And after successful operation, we are in the success page. Perfect. So basically, Stripe payments work like that. And in the next video, you are gonna see what are we gonna do. Awesome. So we finished the second part. In the next video, we are gonna complete our application. I hope you liked it. If you learned something new today, please like the video and leave a comment. And also, you can support the channel by using join button or the link in the description below. Okay, don't forget to follow Lamadev social media accounts. And that's all. I hope I'll see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.